This project is all about patterns. Grab some drawing tools, like a fine point marker or a pen, and let's get started. We are going to use patterns and tangles in this very simple landscape template. But first of all, why are we doing it? What is exactly the purpose of this exercise? Well, the first reason is obvious – working with patterns and repetition principle. I know it sounds simple, but there is a process and steps that need to be learned while doing that. We will learn to work with pattern values. Each graphic element has its own visual weight that is based on both value and intricacy of the design. You will learn to manipulate and bend patterns to create an illusion of depth. The patterns we are going to work with are both grid-based and free-form. Each one of them will create a unique sense of texture. Working with intricate designs boosts your creativity, develops better eye-hand coordination, improves drawing skills. And, of course, it's still very relaxing. No wonder this technique is called Zen Patterns. Before we go crazy with patterns, we need to analyze the shapes that we're going to work with. Pick the patterns. Create a plan. What we see is clearly a landscape with a foreground, a middle ground and a background. And we have the sky, some clouds and the sun. Each area will require different types of patterns. How do objects change the way they look with the distance? How do we use aerial perspective? If you do not quite remember, there is a link to that lesson below this video. But the general rule is, similar objects tend to become smaller and lighter with distance. They show less details. Of course, when it comes to a particular picture, there will be some variations in value if we talk about a landscape with a strong light source and strong shadows. Let's not forget that all elements have a value of their own as well. Use logic. Applying these principles in our landscape, we need to focus on few things. Value. Foreground patterns should be darker than similar elements in the background. Intricacy. They should be more complex and detailed to create more interest in the foreground. Size of the elements. Background designs should become smaller and simpler. All shapes in this picture represent different elements – hills, bushes, mountains, clouds. Each of these elements has its own texture, so we should definitely keep that in mind as we select patterns. One more thing to consider – the grid. Each shape should not look too flat. Let's add some 3D quality to them. We can do so by bending the grid lines as if we are covering the hills with a giant pattern blanket. Before you start drawing, have some sketches, patterns and designs ready for a quick reference. It doesn't mean you'll have to copy them, but they will serve you as a good starting point or just an inspiration. Not everything in the picture will be filled with grid-based patterns. You decide. But for the shapes that are, draw a grid first. Use a pencil and very lightly sketch the grid lines. Curve them to follow the form. Deeper into the picture, close to the grid lines. Start with the foreground designs, because they are the most complex and obviously more time-consuming. You can also include linear patterns in your design. And to emphasize the leaves texture, I am using freeform designs for a less structured look. Mountain patterns are simple and mostly vertical, to create a visual contrast with the hills. The designs are more angular, to show the rough texture. Unlike clouds, that are supposed to be soft. The sun should be the lightest value of all. Actually leaving it blank will create a nice focal point in the landscape. After careful planning, completing the drawing should not be difficult. Feel free to modify the designs as you go to adjust the values. Take your time, don't rush, and have fun.